Hi, this is Andip Jali and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 188 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case that shows how chronic total occlusion techniques can be useful even for non-CTO intervention. The patient was a gentleman with previous coronary bypass graft surgery. He also previously had successful PCI of a right coronary artery CTO. He also had issues on a bypass graft to the OM, but the native circumflex could not be recanalized. He presented a few weeks prior to this presentation with significant chest discomfort that was considered to be due to a PDA lesion, but PCI failed because of tortuosity. The patient came again with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He did have normal ejection fraction. And this is the anatomy. This was before the CTO of the right coronary artery, heavily calcified CTO, saphenous vein graft going into the PDA. And um, essentially what happened is retrograde approach and we were able to recanalize the native uh, right coronary artery, but stents could not be placed into the PDA because of tortuosity. This is the current angiogram, which shows that the native right coronary artery remains patent. However, there's a severe lesion at the site of the SVG anastomosis. In the meantime, that vein graft to the PDA had occluded. Also, there was significant lesion into the right posterior lateral. Regarding the other vessels, the vein graft to M was okay, the lima to LAD was okay. So those two lesions appear to be the culprit, the posterior lateral and the PDA. Now the problem was about the PDA. The posterior lateral was easy to wire and stand. However, we were unable to advance a guide wire into the PDA. We tried with uh, a microcatheter, polymer jacketed guide wires, uh, C on black wire, were able to get to the area of the disease. However, the wire would not cross despite having the microcatheter. We did try several things, including the reversed wire technique. We did put a loop into the occluded graph and trying to come back. We did try to wire undergradely, but the bend was too much and there was disease within a previously placed end into the PDA. So the PDA could not be wired. How can we solve this problem? So significant tortuosity at the touchdown of the occluded saphenous vein graft. And here's the solution we came up with. We were able to advance a retrograde gladius mongo all the way into the aorta. This was a relatively fresh occlusion of the saphenous vein graft, so we knew it was going to be easy to advance it. And indeed, the wire went easily out, and then it was snared uh, through another guide catheter. We then externalized the wire, R350, and now we're coming down with the Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter over the externalized wire. And after several attempts, the wire now could cross from the saphenous vein graft into the posterior descending artery. Of course, to be able to stand this, we need to advance a guide wire undergrade from the native proximal right all the way to the PDA. To overcome these problems, we did a kissing balloon inflation, one balloon coming through the native right coronary artery, the other balloon coming down the saphenous vein graft. And the idea here was to um, decrease any stenosis at the touchdown trying to open up the lumen as much as possible to make room for an undergrade wire to make this tight bend. Still, the wire would not take the bend, so we decided to use the reversed guide wire technique. What does that mean? We have a looped polymer jacketed guide wire that's a C on black. That wire is advanced over the Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter inside the occluded saphenous vein graft. So we're trying to get the knuckled C on black across the touchdown. And it was a little tough at the touchdown, but eventually we see here that the knuckle went all the way up. We now backed away the Sasuke, and now we're pulling back the C on black. And when we're pulling it back, initially it wants to go back to the proximal PDA. So we push it back in and then rotate it a little bit. And then eventually it knuckles and it goes into the PDA. So reverse guide wire technique to be able to wire into the PDA. 
So now we do have access into the vessel. We kept the retrograde wire initially until we delivered a balloon to make sure that we could um, um, deliver equipment, deliver the balloon, deliver the stand, remove the externalized wire because we never want to stand over an externalized wire. And after removing the externalized wire, we then deployed the stand into the PDA. And then we finished the bifurcation PDA PLV with DK crush, and that uh, opened up both vessels quite nicely. So many lessons from this case. The first one is that this is not a CTO PCI. This was a patient who had a tight angulated lesion at the distal anastomosis of the vein graft, tending the native vessel. But the problem was we could not get any wire to go under grade. So to overcome this issue, we advanced a wire retrogradely, externalized it, and then came through the vein graft, ballooned, and then did the reverse wire technique, which can be extremely useful for tortuous cases, and it was uh, very useful here. Enabled us to come under grade, put the knuckle into the occluded SVG, and then wire the PDA after pulling it back. So CTO skills can be used not only for CTO PCI, but also for non-CTO interventions. Thank you.